Right, so Shane Williamson, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, really good, thank you, mate. Good stuff, it's great to have you on. Um, as I've mentioned in the introduction, one of the, the big reasons I wanted to get you on today, Shane, was because it's nice to see someone um, in the fitness industry do a, a really good transition from one role to another um, and do that very successfully and do that really, really well. So to kick us off today, um, I was wondering if you could tell all the listeners a little bit about yourself and you know what you were doing before you joined Profit because you've, you've not been with us that long yet, really. Um, so give people an idea, paint them a picture of, of what you've been doing and, and where you're at now. Yeah, of course. Yeah, like you said, I've only been at Profit for about seven months. I I started off in like the gym type of environment as a lifeguard, which was what which was was uh, which was for Turtle itself. Did that about twenty twenty years old. I was lost my lifeguard course at one of the leisure centres just around the corner. Got a weekend job at Turtle Fitness. Within a few months, I was doing the forty hours on Pulsard. There, uh, could not go back to doing that now. <laughs> could not go back to doing that at, at all. But yeah, I was doing 40 hours there. Then I, after about a year or so, I moved moved sites to a leisure site, which was closer to my home at the time. So more of actual like lifeguard responsibilities rather than looking after the full club as well. Spent about a year doing doing that on just a couple of less hours more. Uh, got my gym and PT through council itself, which was, uh, which was paid for because I never did university. So I managed to swindle that swindle that without paying for the level two and three which was good always a bonus yes definitely <laughs> uh, did, did some shadowing some part-time hours in the gym there as well but that was just like stood at a desk you know giving an induction maybe once a week to about five people or so but apart from that it was just just the normal health and safety side of things spent about a year doing lifeguarding slash fitness instructing at council and then the gym job opened up back up at Total Fitness, which was then again closer back home after about a year and a half where for so. Did the full time fitness position um four years, four and a half years moving on to five before I then decided to join Profit. Spent about four years just being on gym floor, Monday to Friday, one weekend a month, uh, teaching all the classes, spin, boot camp circuit the rig, rig circuits on gym floor and things like that so that's where i'm up to before i joined profit in march this year excellent so it's safe to say that you've got a uh, vast experience in the fitness industry doing various roles and responsibilities um yeah I've, I've had older brothers always been into the gym so whether i've worked in the gym or it's always been in a building that's actually part of a gym so the, the best thing about it i've never had to pay a gym membership so that's <laughs> no excuses for not being fit then um no, exactly. so for you then shane what was the you know we're, we're going to unpack this phase of transitioning from one role to another especially from fitness instructor to pt because i know it's one that a lot of people consider and it's one that a lot of people battle with in their own heads talk to us a little bit about after after doing the fitness instructing role for four years, what was it about becoming a PT that attracted you? Like, what was it that you were looking for in terms of a job or a career or a business opportunity? Try and uh, give us an idea of where your head was at with that. Yeah, I feel like um, with me being actually in fitness industry, I always wanted to push to do that PT side of things. Obviously, there's the, the worries was there when when I was con considering coming across, the worries was definitely there. But I feel like being in the gym and seeing the perfect guys, you know, coming and going, some of them staying, like one specifically has been there for quite a while. Um, I think it was just more of a case of just actually wanting to drive for my own business. Like I never did college or uni, so I, in my head I was always going to be on that minimum wage, 40 hours, full-time job. And I, like I said, I, I didn't, don't have a house, don't have a house myself, don't have kids. And it was one of them of, let's just get some balls about myself. Let's just push it through. Me and my girlfriend want a house in the future. And was just, if, if, if I didn't, didn't do anything about it, it was a case of there's other jobs out there for me. But as I've been doing it now, I'm about nine months into it. There's no bigger drive for me than running your own business, especially when it's something that you're most passionate about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And for you, Shane, because I know it's different for each person, what is it that you love about running your own business as opposed to being employed? I know that obviously being employed is, is part of people's lives, usually at some point in their life. And we've, we learn a lot from that. We take a lot of schools. But for you, what was the, what's been the draw towards running your own business? What, what does that serve you with? Yeah, I think it was definitely 
being able to plan and force your own diary around the times that you want. Like say I was doing 40 hours, so the half hour starts finishing at two, being on the air again the next day or late to an early where you had to finish at half 10 and then start at half five in the morning. It was one of them where it was like you was waking up for work on the back of six hours sleep and not even wanting to go up because you were not going in for anything specifically. Whereas it's now it's like a little bit earlier finishes. I wanted to plan extra stuff, stuff in, like I assume we'll talk about in a bit, like the free classes that I do um, with me having that fitness background. And it's just keeping people happy. And I always wanted that family community between myself, clients, and then my other clients, when they're on one-to-one -one sessions, they're getting to see each other in that class that I, that I pitch on the Monday night. So I feel like definitely running your own business, you, you have that drive to wake up in the morning on that back of a free things I'm going to do today checklist and go and do it for your actual self rather than for a business that if you left, you'd have your post back up in, in a month's time easily. So definitely running your own business is that drive to push yourself to the more boundaries that are in that employment role. Yeah, cool. And in terms of you taking that jump, Shane, uh, Shane I know it sounds like when you describe it the way you just described it, it seems like a, a really easy and obvious decision. Like you said, you didn't have your own house, you didn't have kids, um, you weren't particularly enjoying not controlling your own diary and things like that. But at the same time, um, I, I know that you had a lot of worries and concerns around that time. Can you tell us about some of your biggest worries and concerns when it came to, you know, giving up a full-time job and starting your own business? Yeah, my three biggest worries was definitely, like I say, we talked about moving a house and things, and it's like my three biggest worries was not having a, an income, like a, a constant basis income, like the same figure every month. Yep. It was pitching the price at the end when I found out how much it was. Me being on minimum wage, the one five one one when you first start off, pitching that for one to one sessions is a lot of money. So it's keeping people happy as well, which is because I've had that fitness background, I, in my head I know what I'm doing, but can I do that to other people? So my three biggest worries was pitching the price at the end, having that steady income per month. You know, some months might be five hundred less, some months might be five hundred more, but not knowing what I was gonna bring in. And then the third one was just keeping hold of clients like pros and cons of everything but I thought clients would drop off a lot faster and a lot quicker and all together you know in one go yeah. whereas like I said I've been doing it nine months and I think I've had well I've had one drop off and that was because she retired yep so it's literally yep. just good everyone's enjoying it everyone seems to be smashing the girls out and then through the profit like education you get taught how to actually sell yourself in the way of it's not just going to 151 we get this 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 or this and it all, it all makes sense. And when you do pitch it, the amount of people that have said to me, oh, is that it? Or, oh, yeah, that's fine. It's crazy. Rather than no, everyone going, oh, that's too expensive. I can't afford it. Yeah, yeah. So let's take a minute then to dive into each of these three areas because I think there's probably some really good um, value in these things for people that are newer in the industry. So if we look at um, the bit you were just talking about there when you said about pitching the price at the end and, you know, as you mentioned previously, you were on minimum wage, but when you join Profit, our trainers start by charging themselves out at £35 an hour. Um, so it is quite a big jump to go from minimum wage to £35 an hour and seeing the value in yourself. So that was a worry for you. Um, how has it actually played out for you? Like, how, did, how have you overcome that? Because you've alluded to the fact that that's not necessarily been as big a, a concern as you thought it might have been. But why is that the case? What is it that's happened that has allowed you to, to get past that and actually not see that as an obstacle? Yeah, I think, um, like we say about planning your diary and then your your one page that you plan out and you get everyone to use when we first start, you'll be my mentor, obviously, helped do that. So I had the one page, I know how many sessions my minimum target was before I then earned minimum wage. So if I'm doing 40 hours a week, I could do about 14 and still earn what I was earning being at Turtle on, on the full 40 hours a week, and that's doing 14 sessions. And now I hover around 100 sessions and it's like 25 a week, more or less doubling what I used to take home, give or take. Yep. And yep. there's no worry about it at all. Now, like I say, my, my dread was losing somebody. And it's like if there was on a two-week two, two week package, it's like £300, which is a lot of money. But then at the same time, I'm still making miles more than what I was on minimum wage was. 
doing less hours per week still. So there's still that time slot for people easily to slot to slot back in there. Yep. And in terms of you actually getting confident at pitching yourself at a much higher hourly rate than what you used to be paid, Shane, how did you how did you sort of increase your confidence and and get comfortable doing that for people? Like how did you start to see the value in in yourself so that you could charge that amount? I think when I started doing the one-to-one -one sessions, you realize how much you actually put out there. And it's not for me. I started pitching my consults quite early on at per week prices rather than saying per hour or this is what it is per month. I always pitch man per week because, like I say, I throw in that extra class for everybody with me having that fitness background. So in my, in my ideal diary, in my head, what I saw when I was pitching that consult at the end was if you do one a week with me, you get a one-to-one -one with me, you get a free group class, which then sees all my other clients, which classes us when we get to like events, and we'll do the free peaks or total loser. At least everyone's seen each other's face then as well. Yep. You're getting obviously a food plant, a workout plant, and I say bases are 35 pound a week rather than per hour. Like it yep. technically is per hour because that's all they've seen me for. Yep. But at the same time, it's like, it's constant communication with them, making sure they're doing the food right, the workout right, making sure they're okay in the cell. And when you pitch it at £35 a week rather than per hour, it makes them realise what they're actually what they're actually getting. It's not a case of I'll see you at 9 till 10 on Monday morning and I'm not seeing you again till the week after. Constantly seeing them, seeing them in the gym when you're with other clients is a great like sales point for them as well. So I feel like it's just putting everything together like that helps really well. Yeah, yeah. It's helping people see the, the actual value in it, isn't it? It's like you say, it's not a a one and done session. It's everything else that goes in and around that. Um, so in order for you to, to get to that point, Shane, um, I know that there was a lot of stuff early on that you received education wise and things like that. Can you talk us about your experience of the profit week one course? Because I know that it's quite an intense time and period and everyone has a, a variety of different experiences and emotions as they go through that but can you give us a little idea of how you found that first week process and then following on from that how you found that sort of ongoing eight week education as well that followed on from that point yeah yeah definitely like like we say one of my setbacks for not joining profit faster was this first week course the eight week education because i know it sounds really daft now but in my head I already knew how to be a PT. So why do I need to do a week's course? Why do I need to come and keep coming back every every Wednesday? Especially when it's like the opposite side of the country for me being from Hull, it's the opposite side. But when we did it, it's more of a case of like, you don't get taught anything like that. You get taught so many things. And the things that I've learned off the, first, the full first week, all the Wednesdays that we had to do in the first eight week, honestly probably got me about three quarters of my clients coming in, whether that's a simple stretch you know, strength programming, whatever it is that we've been taught, you're literally going in the gym on that night or the next morning and showing that one person. Next week you see him, the next day you see him, it's like, I can show me that again. And before you know it, they've, they've signed up and they're a client. So definitely the first week was information overload. Very like, wow, what the hell was that? But when you do your eight week on the Wednesdays, it's kind of drawing them days one by one and splitting it up so that you're actually, you know, lending it into more depth and just taking your time with it each Wednesday. And then as people know that have done it on that eight week, you get that sales with Hopper at the end. And again, the way the way he was telling us how to how to pitch and things like that, that gets you confident in when it comes to sitting down and actually doing a consultation with somebody. Yeah. And Hoppo, who uh, Shane is referring to there, has actually already been on the podcast. For those of you that haven't listened to that, it's Rich Hopkinson. Um, he's been on talking about some of that stuff that he teaches the newer trainers like Shane and like others that join the company. So that's, you know, having that support and that system in place allows people to come in and feel like they can actually sell themselves and sell themselves well and do it, you know, the right way. Um, Cause there's certainly wrong ways to sell yourself as well in the Shane. And, you know, I hope we do a good job of providing people with, with ways like you described there where you just go out and help people. Like it doesn't yeah, feel like a sales process. If you just help people, they come to you for help. Yeah, definitely. That's it. It's like, it's not for me. It wasn't a consultation. I never said that word. I, like I, I said, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll grab a seat in cafe. We'll, we'll get a drink each and we'll just go over everything you want. And then when they do, I said, we'll go over everything I want. We'll pitch some of the options at the end. And like Hopper says, like you've already told them that you're going to pitch something to them at the end. So you don't have to be nervous about doing it because you're going to do it anyway. 
Yeah. So they're expecting it and it's not okay. It's like, I've not had it yet, but there's always going to be a case of someone going, oh, I can't afford it. And it is as simple as that. People can't afford it, but we've still ho- offered them that little, that little bit of help, which pushes them in the right direction as well. And there may be clients six months, a year down the line. It might not just be there and then. You've yep. at least made that first initial statement with them. Yep. Um, there's a couple of points that you've mentioned so far, Shane, that I want us to dig a little deeper on because I think they'll be, they'll be really useful for people. So the first one is, when you told us about your story before Profit, you mentioned on a few occasions, like you didn't go to uni, and things like that. Um, how have you found the education side of, of what we do and what it takes to be a PT? Because I know that a big concern for a lot of newer people entering the industry is that I don't know enough. You know, there's always new things to learn. I'm not smart enough. You know, I can't help people. How, how have you found that or how have you dealt with that? Because like you say, you didn't go to university. You didn't have a degree. You'd done your level two, level three. You'd been a fitness instructor, so you had some experience. But I imagine that on some level, you still had a little bit of doubt about your own knowledge and ability to, to some degree. Um, and you've said to me on several occasions, Matt, I'm useless if I've got to do an exam or an assessment or anything like that. Um, so just talk to us about how you found that whole educational process so far and, and what are the sort of key bits you've taken from it personally? Yeah, definitely. Like like you've just said there, like even if you go a bit further back, I didn't even get like GCSEs from school. I was hardly there to be fair. So like I said, to, to go from minimum wage to then be charging £35 an hour and even when you pass your level four asking for more, like we had the discussion the other day about it and I'm like more than happy to, to start charging that because I 100% see already how much they're getting and I can see myself develop every time even last night we did the education day yesterday I was straight into the gym a couple of clients on a Wednesday night putting in the warm-ups that we did on that day and they're looking at me as if to say where the hell did you learn that from and it's like the know that every third Wednesday of the month for me at the minute it's education day and then going from what else was it sorry um just how you'd found like what are the what are the key bits that have helped you personally you know in terms of the education we've provided so far what are the bits that have have helped you the most yeah definitely like like you said about the exams as well i was always more practical which is why i never had like the college or the uni on my mind because i could never sit with paperwork exams i just look at exams and they just blur together but when we did the, like I said, the education day yesterday, it's like it's splitting it down into into to actual notes so that when it comes to it, you're writing out a document, then that document transfers to the actual exam. And when you've got that interest inside of things as well, you're obviously taking more notes, more interest in things like that. So it's not a case of it's just like an exam, sit and do it. It's the full background help side of things, making notes, actually doing it as well, like practical wise, and then sit in the exam. So that definitely helps in that way, doing the education days rather than just being sent an exam and having to, to do it there and then you're doing it properly. Yeah, yeah, good. And I suppose something that links in well into sort of the education side of things is another area you mentioned earlier. You'd mentioned that one of your concerns before you started was like holding on to clients and retaining people over a longer period of time. Um, and I know that's something we try and help people with in terms of the education we deliver and stuff like that. Tell us about some of the things that you've done so far to retain clients and make sure that people keep seeing value and receiving value and you know you mentioned you've only actually lost one client in the last nine months which is amazing especially for a brand new pt you know you must be doing a lot of good things so give us an idea of what it is that you're doing for people that just keeps them bought in for a long time yeah going back from from hopper again when he did his sales it was like them wow ones you have to actually nail before you put in the tools and i've always been like a OCD type of person where all the files are right. I know that I'm getting paid right. People know exactly what they're doing. If we're doing a catch-up session, they know exactly when it is and things like that. And it likes it because I've had that fitness background. I throw in that class on the Monday night for everybody and I, I alternate it from four, four weeks. So I do spin on week one, abs on week two, boot camp is like week three, and then boxer sars slash, you know, that little punching type of circuit is week four. And the way I do it is I get people to, to come that are clients of mine, but the rule is they have to bring a friend, a family, and if they're not on a membership pass, that's when Total Fitness obviously become my friend because they get a sign-up potentially from it as well. Yep. That's been running a couple of months since I started to get my diary like exactly how I wanted it. So I think I've done it about three months now, maybe just coming up to that, and I've had about five sign-ups from it. Total Fitness have had about seven. 
Yeah. So it was it's an absolute no brainer that I miss teaching the class side of things. So to throw out a forty five minutes an hour spare once a week to then get six, you know, five or six clients, even if that was a year, yeah, it's still absolutely worth worthwhile at all. And I yeah. think when it comes to doing clients, it's just making sure they know that I'm taking interest in it. It's like as soon as I walk through the door, it's like we've always said, everyone knows this. It's like knowing the kids' birthdays, you know, knowing exactly what they did on the weekend, asking how it was, what the plans are. And it's just not a, I never ask them to refer to me as a personal trainer. We're, we're friends, we know it's a family community. So I know exactly what they're doing. Like I say, I know the dog's called, I know what the cat's called and things like that. And it's just making that mental note like you would at the start for when you first meet them and what they're doing the weekend. You know, I think you mentioned it about if the dog's going to the vet's, how was he and things like that. It's the stuff like that that previous personal trainers that they've had probably would have, you know, brought into account. It's literally like we say that hour. See you again next week where it was where more of that family community is harder things. And it's nice that they they actually get to know the other PTs in the gym. There's like four or five of us at home now. So everyone seems to know each other. We've all got specific clients, but everyone seems to know each other as well. So it's great. Good. It just goes back to caring for people, doesn't it, mate? If you just if you just care, if you just show that you're you're interested in them as a person, it goes a long way, doesn't it? And I think what you've done there is, is you've built on that by integrating this community into the gym. You've used what you're good at and and built a community around that, which is which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and that then becomes, you know, almost in an ironic way, that extra thing that you're doing for free to add value was actually be, actually become an, an amazing lead generation strategy for you. <laughs> that could be the only form of uh, gym floor you do for the next few months and it'd be enough to yeah. keep your business ticking over nicely, um, which I suppose leads us down, down the route of where I'd like us to go next, Shane, is trying to give people an idea of where you're at now. Um, I know you alluded to it a little bit earlier on, but but give the listeners a little bit of an idea of what your business looks like now, sort of, you know, nine months into the to the journey of uh, of being a profit PT. Yeah, uh, just just popping back to the start there as well. It was a case of that the Monday night class type of thing. That's my lead generation, and it I literally don't have to walk the gym floor now at all. Whereas when I first started, I did a little bit. Like I have so much like admiration for the brand new PTs that come in, brand new gym. Whereas for me, obviously, being the, the gym instructor first, I could walk around the gym at any time of the day, no faces and names, which obviously is a massive help yep. when it comes to it. That month's notice that I had to hand in, I think my first week I had about 17 consults lined up already. Yep. Managed to get, you know, 15, 16 of them. Some of them could afford it. Some, some of them, my pitching was bloody terrible at the time, but you always <laughs> learn you learn more as you do it. So I walked into about 43 sessions, I think my first month was. Yep. I can say a massive, massive help being in that fitness industry first, especially because it's that gym that I've left, but going back into self-employed. Yep. So I walked into about 43 sessions month one, probably doubled it month two, eight, 80 plus. And then since then, I've always been hovering around 92. I think 112 was my other best score, and that was like middle of summer. Like yep. I say, I'm very OCD when it comes to tracking and things like that. So I've got a little graph set up on the uh, on the Excel document so I can see where my peaks are. So when it comes around to next year, I know at what point I was the busiest, what point I was the least busiest, and like the trials and stuff like that come into play in their months where I was obviously one the busiest. But the more I'm into it, the more people know that I'm PT now. Like I've st- I still have people coming up to me on gym floor asking me, how to work the machine when I'm actually in a one-to-one session. And it's like, come on, I don't work here no more. <laughs> that, that at least get, they know me from that. So then I'll go over to them, grab them when I've got spare time and go through it. And it leads to a, leads to that client, which is good. So yeah, sat on about 103 sessions now, I believe. Diary is probably the way I've got it at the minute. Busy Monday, busy Thursday with a, with a slot in between dinner time like now. So that I'm coming home, getting some tweet, going back usually around 7 till 11 in the morning on Monday and Thursday and then 4 till 8 on the night, Monday, Thursday as well. And then just that class on the Monday night, 8 till 9. Yep. Like I said, that 8 till 9 is that free. I'm not getting paid for it. It's just offering that service, that extra little wow two factor that people are getting for free when they sign up with me on the package. And they're bringing their friends and family to it. Uh, Wednesdays are obviously off, apart from our education days. 
Tuesday, I don't start till dinner time. So I do like 12 till 8 with a, with an hour gap at 4, I believe. Just with me having that busy day Monday, I just want that little re- reset in the Tuesday morning. Yep. That's where I do my admin work, you know, sat at home, it's absolutely class. And then, like I said, Wednesdays are off, Fridays are 8 till 2. And it's finished for the weekend. Excellent. And that's your uh, that's your business that's paying you double your previous job? Literally, yeah. It's about 25, <laughs> 26 hours a week, and I'm not doing 40 anymore. And like I say, more or less doubling what I used to get. Obviously, we're paying our profit invoice, we're paying tax and things like that, but definitely miles more money than what I used to earn on the Good. on the seven pound summer an hour that I was on. Good. And I know that you're still very new into um the profit system and things like that, Shane. But looking ahead now, I know this was something that me and you talked a little bit about on Monday when I was in Hull, but give give a, give the listeners an idea of where you're setting your sights for the future. Like what is it that you want to work towards? What is it that you're hoping to to do with your business like give us an idea of where you would like to take things over the next few years yeah i think i'm i'm very focused on one-to-ones at the minute i've got one semi-private out them out out, 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 and hundred sessions that i've got because in my head i feel like i've because i've come from that teaching classes background i was so used to teaching you know 30 people i know that's not a group session but three or four people for me is more like a class at the minute rather than that strict like pt session so I think at the minute, I'm quite happy just keeping the one-to-ones. But obviously, everyone would like to to work less hours and get paid more money. So I think in the future, when I've really nailed these one-to-ones, got really good at them, got a bit more experience under my belt as well, starting to pair people up. Like I so say, in future, it's going to be kids, hopefully. House of my own. So being at gym till nine, eight on a night, that at the minute is great because I was used to being there till like quarter past ten, half past ten. But like I say, when we have kids in the future, it's nice to be home with them. So I think in the future, it's going to be a case of pairing people up, trying to do mornings till dinner time. But like I said, that's that's a few years in front. Yep, yep. And you even mentioned to me on Monday that you, uh, you'd you love one day to get involved in in some of like the mentoring stuff and that as well. Like talk to us about that. What 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 is it about that that interests you? Yeah, definitely like, when I first started, Matt, you were, it was the text call every other day, you know, asking how I was, getting that buzz off the first sign-up that I made, the, the 20th sign-up. It's still the same, like, gardens, excitement that you get. And I feel like I've been class at doing stuff like that because I've always been, like, that team leader in, like, previous jobs. Yep. So I feel like I could guard people through it, especially with me being that gym instructor background. It's pushing people through that as well. So that stage obviously helps knowing how to to now do them lead gens on the floor when i was like pushing team leader at total it was making all the other guys speak to five new faces a day so it's as simple as that for pt as well if you can spend hour at the tops on gym floor splitting it up with bricks getting people getting people in talking i feel like i could guide them through that type of process as well excellent um final thing to finish off with shane is I know that it's been a whirlwind of a ride so far. You've learned loads of things. You've experienced loads of things. Um, Listeners always like any sort of resources that they can go away and find. So I wanted to finish off with asking you if there's any sort of books or certain types of learning or education that you found particularly useful in your journey so far. Is there anything that stands out to you? If not, that's fine. But I just like to ask the question because people love resources. Uh, in terms of books and things, it's probably all been said on previous podcasts, especially with, you know, the high level trainers. Um, I enjoy the strength side of things more, the strength programming side of things more through our actual education days. I I like to I like to class myself as like that strength type of category that I'm the best part in strength, and then like your flexibility and mobility. So I always like uh, like the stretching type of books. But like I said, they've all been said in the past. It's whenever they've come up on the podcast, I've been downloading it myself or going out to buy it itself and just reading, reading through them. Cool. Are there, are there any one of those books that stand out to you, Shane? Any one in particular that you would, uh, you would recommend? 
for those I of am. you li- for those of you listening now, Shane is uh, yeah. is fran- frantically looking through his uh, through his wardrobe for yeah. a book. <laughs> yeah, the the one that I've got in my underneath underneath here in my drawer, uh, the Anatomy of Stretching by Brad Walker. It is, and that's literally splits it down into color categories. Every single muscle, every single stretch, is in a yeah, great copy. I think I got it for about a tenner at one of the bookshops in town. Cool, that's awesome. Uh, recommended it to clients as well. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good one, especially in people that sit down at work all day. Think you're absolutely geniuses when you, you know, opening up the hip flexors, pushing the chest up in the air, and all of a sudden they're walking around like they're a new person. It's like we're wizards. Yeah, but it's just a case of simple stretching. But yeah, yeah. that's the book that I, I really refer to when it comes to clients, like I said, that sit down at work all day. It's getting them to do that in their own time. Excellent. Good. That'll be really useful, that Shane, especially because I know that, you know, when me and you first met a long while ago, you know, books and things weren't necessarily something you liked to spend time on. So I think when you come across ones like that, that particularly stand out um, and the very visual and things like that is really, really useful. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, a great recommendation. Um, for now, Shane, that's everything, mate. I really appreciate your time. I want to, uh, I want to let you crack on with your day because I know I've interrupted your day today to get you on the podcast, but it's something I wanted to do. We've had a lot of the more experienced trainers on that have been here for like five plus years. And I thought it was time to get someone on that was much sooner in their journey and uh, earlier on in the process. So you were the perfect candidate for that. Um, are, there any yeah, sort of, are there any sort of final thoughts or sort of bits of advice you would give to new people that are thinking about becoming a PT or thinking about doing what you did and jumping from fitness coach or fitness instructor to personal training? Yeah, I think, um, I think if you are going from fitness to the PT full profit, I would a hundred percent recommend it, especially if you are in the same gym that you're going to go to. I know a few people find out what gyms are going to go to halfway through the course, but I knew straight away because I was at Hull for, four years and I think the next closest one is about an hour and a half away so it was yeah, even yeah. a whole lot I didn't join um, I think yeah 100% recommend it like I say if you've got that fitness background you know what you're doing it's just doing that course of perfect the first week the eight week really really pushes you out your comfort zone for me people perform better when they're out of the comfort zone as well so learning how to do it learning the full process and the consultation that you get given to do step by step the more you do it, the more you get better at it, the more people you sign up, and it's as simple as that. Awesome. Well, as I said a, a few moments ago, Shane, thank you very much for coming on. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. And I know that there's, there'll be loads of stuff in there that people have found really useful, especially uh, newer trainers. Yeah, hopefully, mate. I appreciate it.